So build processes are important, um, important because when you want to be fast, you have to sort of give up the things that are slowing you down. T-shirt. T-shirt. It's a T-shirt slogan. Love it. He says wearing a yeoman T-shirt. Product placement. <laughs> but you are, you are completely right. Like, things like minifying your CSS and your JavaScript, um, optimizing images, like all of that stuff is really laborious if you have to do it manually. So getting it in your build process makes total sense because yeah. just whenever you do a build of your site, it's just done, taken care of. Yeah. This, sort of, this sort of fits into um, my three tiers of optimization tooling. I should, I, should, I should make a pamphlet. I feel like an advert is about <laughs> to start playing. That's what it feels like right now. It's life advice. Yeah. <laughs> There's a difference. Um, OK, so there's sort of a baseline of tools that everybody should be doing these days. Yeah. Like, hashtag I hate you know, data roaming charges. I don't want anyone shipping 1,000 images down the line. So the baseline is you should be at least minifying your styles um, in your JavaScript, mm -hmm. optimizing your images, um, using compression on the server side, using like uh, async scripts, leverage caching, yep. fluid redirects. So that's, stuff, that's the baseline. Right? Yeah. Then we've got stuff that you and I have been exploring a lot lately, which is sort of get fast and stay fast. Tools like things that will help you inline your critical path CSS so that you can improve first render. Yeah. Um, things that will help you remove unused CSS. Like a ton of those, those things, what I, I'm finding myself doing is I'm using the build process, like building out custom little things where basically I can still control what the critical path is and the build process is just helping me manage it. Yeah. Like I know there are build process steps where it's like it'll do everything for you and it's like magic. Yeah. And that scares me because I don't feel like I understand it enough to know whether those tools are doing the right thing or not. Yeah. So I'm still in like a learning phase, but I, I'm using the build process just to make it easier for me to explore. Yeah. So there's Web Starter Kit, there's also Polymer Starter Kit, which is very similar to Web Starter Kit, except it's got extra plugins specific to Polymer like Vulcanize and things like that. But then Yeoman is basically like you can just go in and it'll ask you what like generator you want to use is what they call where you can then just generate any style of project. So if you wanted to use something like Angular or React or whatever new hotness is out there, there's chances are there's a generator that will give you a build process already for those things. Yeah, exactly. And like one thing I find, so we've got all of the baseline performance optimization is pretty much covered by Web Starter Kit. Mm. And if you're, if you're like, one thing I find a lot of uh, agencies doing is that they'll, they'll use UMN to scaffold out their projects, and they'll go into Web Starter Kit and they'll take a look and say, okay, well, we're interested in the image optimization parts or the script minification parts. We're just gonna steal like 70% of this file and just like drop it into our project. And that's, that's perfectly fine. You know, you pick and choose what makes sense to you. So the way that I've started doing this now, and I know you kind of don't agree with this approach, but I'm just, just going to walk out. Yeah, you should. But it, so I have one gulp file that basically um, you can do a thing like require directory, and then any JavaScript file within that directory, it will basically take the gulp tasks from those each individual files, and then you can basically use them as you would like and just one big long gulp file. And the reason I'm doing that is you can split it out into like styles and scripts and images. Like each section will deal with its own thing. And then I can copy those files into a new project, delete any old ones that I don't want, and just change the directories. And it's like a really nice way of getting reuse out of my gold files. Because before, when I had big ones, everything would just become messy. It'd be hard to maintain or understand like where problems were. Whereas when I've got them in multiple files, everything just sort of becomes much easier to manage and maintain and share. You've been demoted from colleague to desk occupant. Harsh. Um, the, this approach is actually pretty legit. If, um, if, if you're finding that you've got a really, really long gulp file, splitting them out totally makes sense. The reason we haven't done it in some of our boilerplate projects is that you know, for beginners, you don't want them to have to like, think about one other thing. And it also gets a little bit trickier to debug if you've got you know, multiple tasks and different files that depend on each other. Mm. It's not a whole lot more, but it's just another thing you've got to think about. Yeah. like. This is where I always get to a weird point of like best practice versus like ease of use. Yeah. And I always tend to go for best practice because like if you ever look at um, any of the native platforms, they always just say this is the right way of doing something for this platform or this IDE or library or whatever. There's no like middle ground where you could do something because it's easier. So. No. I don't want to say you're wrong, but. <laughs> it's totally fair. I remember when we were. Like a little while ago, you gave me um, a rundown of one of your your presentations, and it was one of the bits was on build processes, and you were like, everyone should just use Grunt, 
actually, golf is coming out. It's the kid on the block. It's kind of cool. Everyone should just use golf. Actually, there's this new thing that's kind of coming out called Broccoli that's also a build process. But then again, NPM Scripts is also coming, so maybe use that. Yep. And in my head, I realized this was at the time where I just learned Grunt and I was switching over to Gulp because it seemed like that, that was getting used a lot. Yeah. And I realized that basically all of the web tooling ecosystem is basically a, a Game of Thrones where the minute I fall in love with one, it's going to die and be replaced. <laughs> So there's a bit of me that feels like I should just never get attached to any of my tools because sooner or later, by getting attached, I'm almost dooming it. 